Harun. Harun. Adi bertela. Huh? Uh, time passed by. Uh, a lot of complexities uh, started getting attached to this very concept of TDS. While every Finance Act made some of the other modifications, amendments to the existing provisions, and also brought in a couple of new provisions every single time. Right. So the idea today is to kind of. Uh, in a very crisp manner, simple manner, demystify these provisions, uh, uh, better understand these provisions so that we, are, we don't put our foot in the wrong side of the law because the cost of non-compliance is way too high. So just to avoid and ensure we are compliant with the Income Tax Act and the related uh, TDS provisions, this particular session has been um, designed and presented for you. So before I proceed further, uh, I request uh, our uh, Vice President of FKCCI, Ramesh Chandra Lahoti, sir, a uh, dynamic personality handling a lot of activities in our um, uh, uh, chambers over here uh, to kindly come forward and present his uh, keynote to the audience. Good afternoon to all. On behalf of the FKCCI and my president, Dr. I.S. Prasad, our senior vice president, Gopal Reddy, and our chairman, Central Tax Committee, Mr. Shavan Gurutur, and today's main on TDS and TCS, our, who is going to speak, our my own colleague from our FKCCI, Mr. Ganpat Lal Kavad, and I, once again, on behalf of FKCCI, I welcome all the participants present here as well as in the virtual mode. As you are aware, FKCCI is regularly holding under corporate and tax laws a lot of issues. Every month there is one or two meetings which can enlighten the industry and the trade and service so that what are the new laws which are coming so that we can adopt easily and where we can have the awareness. And I also welcome our managing committee member, Mr. Shankarapa, to this uh, session. And the nitty gritties, TCS, TDS, as is also for us as an office bearer, is a continuous purpose when we attend the meetings conducted by FKCCI from the corporate tax and income tax department, uh, our wing from FKCCI to know because each every, you are aware every six months, one year, there are certain changes and amendments going to take place. To, to be in the tune with that, FKCCI is always there to enlighten the, those issues and to bring forward to all the industry, trade and services. Once again, I welcome you all. Please have there be a fruitful session. Please do attend future programs also. And I welcome both of you, my colleagues. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Vice President uh, Ramesh Chandra Lahoti for your uh, welcome address and uh, welcoming all of them participating uh, physically. I think we have about 20 of us participating physically and we have 18 participants joining us uh, virtually today. Without further ado, let me take this uh, pleasurous task of introducing the session speaker. C.A. Ganpatlal Kavad, ladies and gentlemen, like I mentioned, is a chartered accountant by profession. He did his articleship at H.C. Kincha & Co., a very famous chartered accountant firm in Bangalore. He is a All India fourth rank holder in CS Inter. He has served as a managing committee member of ICAI, Bangalore branch, between the period 2000 and 2007. He has also served as the chairman of the Bangalore branch of ICI during the year 2006 and 7. Presently, as I mentioned, he is a director of FKCCI. He specializes in the field of income tax, uh, especially with that of various social and religious organizations. He has presented papers at various study circles and seminars conducted by Bangalore branch. With this introduction, I present the speaker to you, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Let me take this opportunity to also present him with a memento. I request uh, our vice president to kindly do the honors. I 
friends, uh, towards the end of the session, a feedback form will be circulated to all of you. A very important request. Uh, in the feedback form, please do mention what kind of programs do you want FKCCI to do? This will be very important for us to plan the future programs. Please do give your valuable suggestions. Over to Ganpatlal Kavad. Thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Vice President of FKCCI, Sri Ramachandra Lahotiji, the Chairman of the Central Taxes Committee, Mr. Sharan Guttur, our own Managing Committee members, Mr. Shankrapa, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, good evening to all of you. At the outset, I would like to thank FKCCI for giving me this opportunity to share some of my thoughts on the topic of TDS and TCS. Before we go exactly into the topic of the day, tedious and tedious, let's briefly understand the history of taxation law in our country. If we look back, the tax law or the tax is always collected by even in the earlier period also, during the Raja Maharaj's period also, when you have East India Company, we used to have Lagan and all those things. But the formal taxation law was the firstly introduced in the year 1860, the then former, the then finance minister in the pre-independence India has introduced the finance bill in the assembly through the un first union budget of the pre-independence India in the year 1860 on 7th of April 1860 by Sir James Wilson. He was the finance minister in the British government pre-independence India. So our income tax act was introduced in the 1860. The formal tax law was introduced in the 1860. Looking at the situation, what was the need for them to introduce the formal tax laws? During the British period in the year 1857, a rebellion has taken place. We are all will be heard about the Mangal Pandey. We have a movie, movie came in his name, Mangal Pandey. He was the person who has done the rebellion along with a lot of other army persons of the British army itself in the year 1857. And the, then that government has suffered a huge loss on account of military, that's called military mutiny. Because of that, they have suffered a huge loss. And the year 1880, sorry, year 1860, government has introduced the Income Tax Act. Further that, there is a lot of changes taken places. And if you look, is it is necessary that everybody has to pay the tax? Is it a voluntary compliance or is it a compulsion? If we, let's say we don't have any income tax law in India, will all of us or any of us will pay voluntarily go forward, come forward and pay to the government saying that, okay, we will pay the tax on the income earned by us. I don't think so. Any one of us will come forward voluntarily to pay the tax. And this fact is acknowledged by the Supreme Court of our own country in the year 1954. In the case of Mahantri Jagannath Chamanus Das versus State of Orisha. In the year 1954, this law or the, this case was rendered was not in relation to Income Tax Act, but it was in relation to Hindu Endowment Act of Orissa of 1950. In context of that law, 
सुप्रीम कोर्ट हैज सेड ए टैक्स इज अनडाउटेबली इन द नेचर ऑफ कंपल्सरी एक्सेशन ऑफ मनी बाय द पब्लिक अथॉरिटी बट इट हैज गॉन फर्दर एंड सेड फॉर द पब्लिक पर्पस द वॉट गवर्नमेंट कलेक्ट कंपल्सरी द टैक्स फ्रॉम द पब्लिक इज यूज बैक फॉर द पर्पस ऑफ द पब्लिक ओनली for creating various infrastructure creating various facilities for the public at large from 1860 onwards we have gone through the lot of changes we have act of 1886 then we have act of 1918 then we have act of 1922 which has gone post independent of india which was there for a decade for a decade after post independent and presently we are governed by income tax act 1961 which passed by the finance act of 1960 moving forward when the tds was introduced if we look back we have this law coming from 1922 act that means almost a century old so tds we have almost a century old it is not a new to the public at large but year over year there is lot of complication lot of changes takes place in the tds law every year government do the changes they will either bring new sections or do some changes so every year there is a one or the other changes we will find in tds laws now as far as tcs is concerned it was fair almost at 30 years old there was no tcs concept it was only tax deducted at source concept earlier which was a century old but as far as tax collection at source is concerned it was introduced by finance act 1988 with effect from 1688 now but look at the situation why we all have to have the tds the what the income tax act says is every ssc or the every person who earns the income has to pay the tax and there is enough mechanism for paying the tax as self assessment tax or the advance tax then why we need to have the tds there are certain situation or so many situations arises if you don't deduct the tax the person who earn the income may not come forward to pay the tax may not file his return voluntarily as said it is a compulsory accession but person doesn't come forward voluntarily to pay the tax for example you pay to a contractor whose receipt may be a 2 lakh or 5 lakh rupees and if no tds is deducted he may not come forward to pay file the return itself and that income may go tax free so that is the whole reason government says no we should recover the tax or we should collect the tax at source or the person who pays the income to the receiver should collect or the deduct the tax at the time of the payment itself and today the situation is 58% of the total tax a few days back i was attending a seminar of the bombay chartered accountant society where department said the 58% of the total tax collected is recovered through the tds and tcs so more than 50% of the tax direct taxes or income tax is collected by the government through the mode of tds and tcs so this is the history behind the tax laws and the tds in our country going forward we'll see the what are the basic under the tds and then we will move forward to the various issues now in my presentation there will be a little bit of the sections also will come into picture whereas i'll try and tell as far as possible in a simple language where all of us can understand the part b and bb of chapter 17 of income tax act provides for the deduction of the tax and collection of the tax at source it start from section 192 salary and end with section 206 double ca where if a person doesn't have don't file his return then what is the law for the collection of the tax it ranges almost there are 50 section though it looks like 192 to 206 it is some 16 or 17 sections are there but if you look inside there is a a b c d 1 2 3 like that it may be more than 50 sections are there through which the department recovers the taxes now let's say if a ssc is liable to deduct the tax 
then what he has to do at first and foremost, he need to obtain a TAN number. If a SSE or a business house is required to deduct the tax or collect the tax at source, first and foremost requirement is he need to obtain the TAN number. He has to apply and get the TAN number. If you don't have the TAN number, what will the situation? You deduct the tax, but how you will pay? You cannot pay. You cannot file the TDS return. And if you don't file the TDS return, person will not get the credit. So first and foremost is you need to obtain a TAN number. After obtaining a TAN number, wherever applies, wherever applicable, every SSE need to deduct tax at source or collect the tax at source. Every SSE means all the SSE except individual and HUF unless and until the turnover of the individual or HUF in business crosses 1 crore rupees or in profession it crosses 50 lakh rupees then only they are required to deduct. Other than these two categories, every other SSE has to deduct the TDS as per the required provision of the law. Once you deduct the TDS, the next things come is after deducting or collecting, you need to remit the collected amount to the government within the prescribed time frame. So if you deduct in the current month, by the seventh of the next month, you need to pay the tax to the government, except for the month of the March, where you need to pay by the April end, month end. Otherwise, you have to pay the tax, either deducted or collected by the seventh of the next month, deducted or collected in the previous month. After paying the tax to the government, let's say you have obtained the 10 number, you have deducted the tax or the collected the tax at source under various provisions of the law. After after deducting, you have paid to the government. After payment, you need to file the TDS or the TCS statement. If you don't file the TDS and TCS statement, the person on whose behalf you have collected or you have deducted will not get the credit. So you need to file a TDS statement or TCS statement online. This is to be filed. TCS has to be filed within 15 days from the end of the quarter and tedious statement is to be filed within one month from the end of the quarter, except for the month of March again, the year end, where you need to file by 15th of May and 31st of the May. TCS for 15th May, tedious by 31st May. Now let's say while filing, you do certain mistakes. What are the options available? You can correct your tedious statement or your TCS statement. Once you have filed and later on you realize that there is an error has happened in the while filing the TDS statement or TCS statement, you need to download the file from the portal, department portal, and you have to refile it with the corrections. Sometimes you don't do the mistake still while department processing the TDS or TCS statement, send certain demand notice, certain mistake they identify. And they said a demand notice, they say, set the intimation. We have to look at the intimation and if required, we need to file a correction statement. After filing the correction statement or after filing the TDS statement, what is the next? You need to issue the TDS certificate or TCS certificate. Though at present, whatever TDS is deducted and TCS is collected after filing TDS statement, the deducted or the collected amount appears in your 26 AS. But still, government requires, the department requires you to download the certificate and you have to issue the certificate. If you don't issue the certificate, there is a consequences for that. Though it is practically, it can be done away with it at present scenario because it appears in 26 AS. But still, the law at present is stand, we need to issue the TDS certificates. Now, after doing all those things, if you find any fault or if you fail in any of these, what we have seen now, obtaining 10 number or deduction, non-deduction, if you fail to deduct or after deducting, you fail to pay. After payment, you fail to file the TDS statement. Then what are the consequences? There are a lot of consequences are attached to it. And it ranges from the interest to the range of the prosecution. 
the department is very serious or the about the tedious uh, compliances of tedious provisions the first consequences is there is a interest for the late deduction let's say in the last month in the month of april 22 22 you are supposed to deduct the tedious on certain credit a contract bill has came for 2 lakh rupees for which you pass a general entry so on that you need to deduct the tds because tds need to be deducted at the time of the credit or at the time of payment whichever earlier so even if you do the credit you doesn't make a payment you need to deduct the tds so let's say you fail to deduct the tds in the month of april then till the date from the month of april till you make the deduction you need to calculate interest for the late deduction at the rate of 1% now what next let's say you deducted in the month of april but you have failed to pay by the 7th of may so there is a interest on the late payment the interest for the late payment is at 1 and 1/2% per month or for the part of the month now this we have to be very careful even if there is a delay of the one day i repeat even if there is a delay of the one day you are liable to pay interest for the two months let's say you have deducted tds in the month of april you have time up to payment of the 7th may if you don't pay by the 7th may you pay on 8th may you are liable for the interest for the month of two two months at the rate 1 and 1/2% that become 3% so you have to be very careful about the payment because the interest rate is very high at 1 and 1/2% and that too for 2 months it says month or part of the month so it doesn't calculate 30 days from the date of the deduction it calculate in the which month you have deducted and by which date you are supposed to pay as these two falls in two different months you will liable to pay interest for the 2 months now if you don't file the tds let's say you deducted on time you paid on time but you failed to file the tds statement then what happens there is a late filing fees even if you are delay by a day there is a 200 rupees fees per day and this we are supposed to pay before filing the tds statement if you don't pay then department will send a intimation asking you to pay along with the interest on that also let's say you fail in deduction or after failure delay in making the payment the next major consequences is disallowance of the expenses itself now we have a tds on the purchases now which is 0.1% of the purchase amount if you have purchase of a 1 crore rupee the tds you are required to deduct at 0.1% is 1000 rupees correct 10000 rupees sorry 10000 rupees so 1 crore of the purchase we are supposed to deduct the tds at the rate of 0.1% 10000 rupees let's say we fail to deduct that the consequences is and 30% of the expenses your 30% of your purchase will get disallowed and you will be liable to pay tax on that if you fail to deduct or after deducting fail to pay by the due date of the filing of the return here is a little extra time is given along with the interest if you pay by the due date of filing of return there will be no disallowances but if you don't pay by the due date of filing of the return the 30% of the expenses will get disallowed so in the example what i have taken if you don't deduct on the 1 crore 30 lakh of the purchases will be disallowed and on that you will be liable to pay the tax along with the interest on tax because you wouldn't have calculated advance tax on that so you will have to liable to pay interest on that also so we have to be very very careful while deducting and making the payments and if it the payment is to be non resident it is 100% of the expenses will be disallowed if you paid a salary to a non resident and you have not deducted the tds 100% of the salary will get disallowed 
so its consequences is very high for a small mistake for a small failure consequences are very high now what next assessi will be treated in default when assessi is treated in default for the purpose of the recovery all recovery proceeding will start and during the course of the recovery proceeding department can attach your bank account all your movable assets can be attached for the recovery purpose what next there is a further to this interest fees disallowances of expenditure you have penalty for failure to deduct or collect if you fail to deduct the tax the penalty is 100% of the tax amount tds amount 100% of the tcs amount they can recover in form of the penalty 100% of the amount so in our example if you are liable to deduct third, say that was 0.1% if you take at the payment made to your professional fees where if the 1 crore you are liable to deduct 10 lakh rupees at the rate of 10% the department can levy a penalty of 10 lakh rupees for the non deduction of the tax the next come penalty for failure to furnish the information if you fail to furnish the required information or if you fail to furnish the correct information if you give a wrong information some places though there is a no requirement to deduct the tds still you need to file the information with the department and if you fail to file the information the penalty ranges from 10000 rupees to 1 lakh rupees sorry and if it is related to non resident payment penalty is minimum 1 lakh rupees it's a straight away penalty is 1 lakh rupees so under 1956 we need to give certain information to the department whatever payment we make to the non resident if you don't give that information or if you fail to furnish those informations the penalty is 1 lakh rupees the next come is the prosecutions now after deducting the tax or after collecting the tax if you fail to pay to the government department can launch a prosecution against the department is very serious till couple of year back we didn't see any prosecution proceeding by the department but of late last couple of years we see lot of penalty was already there they were initiating penalty proceeding but of late they started initiating the prosecution proceeding also and as far as the prosecution is concerned it is a minimum three rigorous imprisonment of minimum three months go up to seven years along with the fine both in case of tds and tcs so these are the consequences though it looks simple but the consequences are very high so please please be careful while your application of the tds and tcs law is concerned moving forward in basic in certain scenario we can apply to the officer to get a nil or lower deduction tds certificates so whenever we get or whenever our pay the person who has to receive the money from a businessman or from the assessi gives a certificate saying that look here i got a certificate from the department which says instead of 10 percent on professional fees or on rent instead of deducting 10 percent you deducted two percent then we have as per the certificate we need to deduct the tds and we have to quote the tds number while that certificate number while filing the tds or tc statement in certain situation the person who has to receive can issue a declaration form saying that my income is not taxable therefore please don't deduct the tds he will give a declaration as prescribed by the law he issues a, in case of an interest or in case of a contract payment if a person issues a certificate as far as contract is concerned a transporter issues a declaration saying that i don't have more than 10 vehicles then there is no necessity to deduct the tds based on the declaration 
we have to deduct the tds and if you receive this declaration we have to file this declaration to the department within the prescribed time furnishing pan let's say i have to deduct tds on behalf of the servant then the servant has to provide me the pan number so every deductee has to provide his pan number to the deductor if he doesn't provide the pan number then what happens as far as deductor is concerned he is liable to deduct he cannot say that he has not provided me the pan number deduct he has not provided me the pan number therefore i will not deduct government says no you can't say that you are under an obligation to deduct the tax or collect the tax so deductor or the collector has no escape saying that the deductee or the collector has not provided me the pan number now what are the consequences if it doesn't provide the pan number there is a deduction or the collection at the higher rate we will take those sections little later because this is little complications so i'll take it but if the pan is not furnished the deduction or the collection is need to be made not at the normal rate but at the higher rate similarly if the person or if the deductee or the person on whose behalf collection is to be made has not filed his return of income then what happens then also there are the special provisions which says there are special rate at the higher rates you need to deduct the tds now how you will come to know whether he has not filed the return of income we will take in the due course trc hope you are aware what trc is it is something called tax residency certificates whenever you need to make a payment to non resident you need to deduct if it is a income is taxable in india you need to deduct the tax while making payment to the non resident also if the income is taxable in indian law in the income tax act but if you want because the non residents are also governed by the double taxation avoidance agreement dtaa in short form what we call is dtaa that's a double taxation avoidance agreement but if we need to give the benefit of dtaa one has to obtain tax residency certificate of the non resident to apply the particular treaty if i have to apply the indo russian treaty or indo us treaty first i should know that the non resident is resident of the usa or is a resident of the russia to apply a particular treaty so for that purpose we need to obtain the tax residency certificates if you don't receive the tax residency certificate we are not supposed to apply dt aa we have to deduct the tax as per the regular tax provisions there are certain judgment which says if they there is they are not able to obtain trc but they are able to provide you some other proof of residency you can apply the dt aa but if you go as per the law it is always advisable to have trc on hand before giving the treaty benefit because law clearly says it is a based on trc only you have to go little ago we have seen if a person doesn't furnish the pan number we are supposed to deduct the tds at the higher rate what the what rate we are supposed to deduct it says either at the rate specified in the relevant provision of the act if the section provide a particular rate at that rate or at the rate in force so for the certain deduction rate is not provided in the section but as rate is provided in the finance act every us finance act provide rate of the tds in the finance act so if the rate is not given in the provision 
we have to take the rate as per the finance act or at the rate of 20% whichever is higher so the minimum rate will become the 20% if the pen number is not given if the deductee doesn't give the pen number tds has to be deducted at the rate of 20% I mean that is the minimum rate it can go beyond 20% if the section or the rate provides more than 20% what are the next consequences if a person doesn't give the pen number whatever declaration he gives to us for non deduction of the tax as i said in case of a transporter if you provide us a declaration but if he doesn't provide the pen number in the declaration that declaration become an invalid declaration the deductor cannot take that declaration into consideration and he has to deduct the tds at the rate given in the one abo either at the rate in the section or the rate in force or at 20% whichever is higher similarly we have seen that ao can issue nil tds certificate or the lower rate tds certificate sorry but if application is made without pen number then the ao is not supposed to issue the certificate itself so no certificate will be issued to person who doesn't have the pen or who doesn't provide the pen so tds will be get deducted at the higher rate he cannot take the benefit of the non deduction his declaration will become invalid no lower tds certificate will be issued to him and the tds will be deducted at the higher rate sorry this is as far as tds is concerned Now, if we look at TCS, we have the similar provision in the TCS also. So, if the recipient doesn't provide the PAN number, TCS need to be collected at the twice the rate specified in the sections. it is twice the rate or at the rate of the 5% so either of these two rates tcs need to be collected then what similarly if a declaration is given that declaration become invalid declaration and tcs is to be collected at the rate given in the one twice the rate or the at the rate of 5% and again the application for the low t tcs will be get rejected and no certificate will be issued now there are certain exception to the rate of 20% or the 5% when it comes to the on the purchase or the sale of the goods it is at the rate, lower rate not at 5 it is 1 5% tds instead of 20% and it is 1% tcs instead of 5% so there is exception to the general rule which is always there now what happens if the person doesn't file his return the last year the finance act 2021 introduced a new law in the statute book saying that if the assc doesn't file the return of income it was earlier 2 years which in the finance act 2022 they have reduced it to one year so for both for tds and tcs it is the person doesn't file the tds his income tax return then the deductor has to deduct the tax at the rate of twice the rate as per the section or 5% whichever is the higher though he provide you the tds uh, sorry pen number oh. ಸೊ ವಿ ಹೀನ್ ಇಫ್ ಎ ಪರ್ಸನ್ ಡಸಂಟ್ ಪ್ರೊವೈಡ್ ದ ಪೆನ್ ನಂಬರ್ 
we have to deduct the tds or tcs at a higher rate now after providing the pen number also if it, he had not filed his return for the last one year for which time is already expired then also he need to deduct the tds the deductor has to deduct the tds twice the rate of the at the rate twice or 5% whichever is higher if the tds plus tcs is more than 50 year 50000 rupees in the previous year that is there in both twice the rate and 5% in both in tds as well as in the tcs no there is a remark column is there which says if the provision of both that is non giving of the pan number as well as non filing of the return is both coexist he doesn't give you the pan number as well as he has not filed his return of income in that scenario we have to see higher of the two sections rate we have to apply so it's a twice the rate of the 5% but if you are required to deduct the 20% if it doesn't give the pan number you have to deduct at the 20% no not at 5% now person has provided us the pan number how we will come to know whether that person has filed his return of income or not every on every deduction of a different ssc we need to know the deductor should know that whether the other person has filed his return of income or not so there is a two way either you ask that person to provide his detail that he has filed his return of income required return of income but in some situation the deductee may be hesitant to give his acknowledgement because it will show his entire income detail then what to do government came out with a situation they will prescribe a specified persons list will be hosted on the website of the department on income tax portal where we need to log in to the website put that persons pan number and the uh, portal will pop up whether the person has filed his return of income or not this as per the department the circular number 11 department said they will host this list on the first of every financial year let's say for the financial year 2023 where we need to deduct tax they are supposed to host this list on the first of the april but i don't think till list is still available on the portal do they say they will host it but still it is not available so till that list become available we can take a simple declaration from the deductee saying that he has filed his return of income along with acknowledgement number and date of filing of the return at least if he provide his acknowledgement it is well and good if he is reluctant to give his acknowledgement number at least for the time being till we find the list on the website on the portal of the department we can take a simple declaration along with the acknowledgement number on date of filing of the return of income and once the list is available on the portal we have to cross check and we have to take it accordingly if we are deducted at a lower rate and we find at a later stage that he has not filed his return of income though he has given the declaration in the next deduction we can deduct the entire amount along with that itself can be done it is a recovery kind of a measure now for the purpose of a financial year 2223 the deductee need to file return for the assessment year 2122 and not the assessment year 2223 because there is a still time to file 2223 assessment year's return so it says the return has to be filed for the previous year in relation to which time of the filing is expired the due date has already expired so due date for the assessment year 2122 is already expired the last days even in spite of the extension it was 15 january 31st december 15 january 15 february and to file a belated return it was 31st march so by the end of the year 31st march the due date for the filing 21 22 return is already over so that year's return we have to consider for the purpose of the deduction for the financial year 22 23 
these were the basic things what you need to take care while applying the tds or the tcs provision as far as compliances is concerned if you fail in any of the compliances you have seen the consequences the consequences are very high it ranges from the as i said it ranges from the interest and it goes up to the prosecution with the free lodging and boarding up to maximum up to 7 years so the provisions non compliances is very dangerous and department is very proactive for the compliances of the tds provision as i said 58% of the revenue comes from the tds and tcs so every year we see one new sections get added to the tds and tcs provisions what are the issues we'll take issues in between issues we will discuss the new sections also which is the burning issues today so we'll take that the first issue if you see if a person doesn't provide his or her pen is it necessary to find out whether he or she had filed his or her return of income for the assessment year relevant to the previous year immediately preceding the financial year for which the time limit for furnishing the return of income is expired we have seen two sections if it doesn't provide he is supposed to provide the pan if it doesn't provide the pan number there is a separate penalty for non providing if it doesn't provide there is a two situation where you have to deduct at the higher rate and then you have to see whether he has filed his return of income also even if he provide the pan the rate of are different now if he doesn't provide you the pan number itself because we have seen section these two sections overlap each other saying that with both are applicable together then what we need to do so if a person doesn't provide you the pen number take a for example for making tds and tcs in financial year 2023 whether one need to find out that return of income for assessment year 21 22 is filed or not when pen is not provided when permanent account number itself is not given to you is it necessary we have to see that whether he has filed his written of income or not yes sir whether we need to go to the see whether he is he has filed his written of income or not so that is exactly the i want to draw the attention to that remark that if the both the sections are applicable together we have to take the which is more favorable to the department but how we will find it out if pen is provided then only we will be able to find it out whether he has filed his return of income or not if i doesn't have the pen number of yours how i will find it out from you or how uh, from the portal whether you filed your return of income or not so in my opinion if he doesn't provide his pan number we don't have to go to the second situation we don't have to see whether he has filed his return of income or not we have to apply non pan rate straight away either the rate given in the sections or in written force or 20% if tds or five twice the rate or 5% in case of tcs then file the return accordingly next issue number 2 can there be a situation where in a single financial year both tds and tcs provision are applicable for the purchase and sales of the goods to the same buyer and seller i'll read it again can there be a situation where in a single financial year both tds and tcs provisions are applicable for purchase and sale of goods to the same buyer and seller for example s sell goods to b buyer in financial year 22 23 can there be a situation where s has to collect the tax that the seller has to collect the tax and b has to deduct the tax in the same financial year can there be this kind of a situation
can there be this kind of a situation is it possible yes okay says yes how we are supposed to deduct the tds on purchase of the goods once you deduct the tds tcs says there is no requirement then what could be the situation where both will become applicable in the same financial year for, within the same buyer and seller between the different buyer and seller yes that possibility is there with the same set of buyer and seller i sell goods to him and he buys from me he has to deduct the tax and i have to collect let's look at the both the sections which are the two burning sections where everybody has the problems what the law says tds on purchase of the goods first we'll understand tds then we'll understand tcs and then we'll come back to the question to our issue any person being a buyer who is responsible for paying any sum to any resident for purchase of any goods of the value or aggregate of such value exceeding 50 lakh rupees in any previous year sell at the time of the credit of such sum to the account of the seller or at the time of the payment thereof by any mode whichever is earlier deduct an amount equal to 0.1% of such sum exceeding 50 lakh rupees as income tax so it says any person who is a buyer and responsible for making payment for the purchase of the goods either at the time of the credit or at the time of the payment whichever earlier so even if you make an advance payment whichever is earlier you have to deduct the tds at the rate of 0.1% once your purchase exceeds 50 lakh rupees so till your purchase doesn't crosses 50 lakh rupees in a particular financial year you don't have to deduct the tds once it crosses 50 lakh rupees you have to start deducting the tds now who is the buyer it says buyer means a person whose total sales gross receipt or turnover from the business carried on by him exceeds 10 crore rupees during the financial year immediately preceding the financial year in which purchase of goods is carried out so for the purpose of the deducting tds you have to see whether in the previous financial year let's say for the financial year 22 23 you have to see the financial year 21 22 whether your gross receipt your turnover in the business has crossed 10 crore rupees if yes you become the buyer for the purpose of deducting the tds so first test you have to apply whether the tds law is applicable to you or not as a buyer whether a tds law is applicable to you let's see from the table it is under section 194q every buyer whose turnover in the previous finance year exceeds rupees 10 crore so to become the law to become applicable to a buyer he should have crossed his turnover in the previous financial year 10 crore rupees from whom it has to be deducted it has to be deducted from the seller of the goods on what amount on purchase of the goods or on payment for purchase of the goods above 50 lakh rupees so if your purchase doesn't cross us 50 lakh rupees or your payment if you are making an advance payment for the purchase of the goods doesn't cross 50 lakh rupees there is no necessity to deduct the tds the moment you reach 50 lakh rupees beyond 50 lakh you have to deduct the tds this law become applicable in the previous financial year from 1st july 2021 at the rate of 1% 0.1% you need to deduct and if the pan number is not provided it says aadhar also if he doesn't have a pan and he provide you the aadhar also you can consider aadhar also if nothing is given you have to deduct the tds at the rate of the 1% after deducting you have to pay and then last thing you have to file the your tds return so for the as i said for the financial year 
your turnover should cross 10 crore rupees to become applicable when the per seller purchase exceeds 50 lakh rupees you need need to deduct the tds when it is not applicable if you look at the law it's a tds is not applicable for the services rendered if you look at the section it says on purchase of the goods so there is no tds under section 194q as far as the services are concerned it is only for the purchase of the goods the section further says tds is not applicable if customer or the buyer is liable to deduct tax at source under any other provision of the act there is sometime it so happens that you are liable to deduct under two different sections in that scenario if the other section you are deducting you need not deduct under this section say your purchase or sales through e intermediary e commerce platform then you are liable to deduct tds under 194o on e commerce platform in that kind of a purchase and sales you don't have to deduct because there you have to deduct at the higher rate so wherever there is a higher rate law always want you to deduct in that particular section whichever is at the higher rate third it says tds is not applicable if seller is liable to collect tax at source under any provision of the income tax except 206c1h 206c1h we'll see little later it is related to collection of the tax on the sale of the goods so if you are if your sale which become purchase for you is liable for tcs under any other provision say if you buy the scrap then on scrap there is a tcs provision you are liable to collect the tax then you are liable there is no necessity on that you have to deduct the tds here because it is covered by the tcs provision but tcs on the sale of goods is not applicable when the tds become applicable so that's why i said can there be both applicable together as i said in my issue what issue we have taken can both be applicable when this says if tds is applicable you don't have to go for the tcs under section 206c1h this this was as far as tds on purchase of goods is concerned let's see the provision of tcs on sale of goods also this provision was introduced one year earlier to tds provision tds on purchase of goods provision so we already have tcs then government thought it fit to have tds also why was tcs introduced itself was not known because when in present scenario when all the transactions are very well covered under either gst law or under the excise law where the seamless information flows between the various departments of the government but still they said no we need to have the the provision so it is every person being a seller who receives any amount as consideration for the sale of any goods of the value or aggregate of such value exceeding 50 lakh rupees in any previous year other than the goods being exported out of india or goods covered in subsection 1 or subsection 1f or subsection 1g sell at the time of the receipt of such amount it doesn't say it's at the time of the sale it say at the time of the receipt of the payment sale consideration exceeding 50 lakh rupees as income tax who is the seller we will understand this through the table by forgetting the entire section seller means a person whose total sales or gross receipt or turnover from the business carried on by him exceeds 10 crore rupees during the financial year immediately preceding the financial year in which sale of goods is carried out so it's similar to the buyer here the seller has to see whether he is liable to collect the tax it will depend on his turnover in the previous year 
let's look at the table we'll bifurcate the entire section it is every seller whose turnover in the previous financial year exceeds 10 crore rupees so every seller of the goods need to collect tcs in the current financial year if his turnover in the previous financial year exceeds 10 crore rupees so if your turnover in the previous financial year is less than 10 crore this entire provisions is not applicable to you your buyer might deduct tds on you because his turnover may be more than 10 lakh or 10 crore sorry but as far as you are concerned you are not liable to collect the tax at source because you are not assessee for the purpose of the tcs from whom it has to be collected it has to be collected from the buyer of the goods the tcs has to be done or to be collected from the buyer of goods on what amount on receipt of the sale consideration it says on receipt of sale consideration above rupees 50 lakhs now look at here this is a catch here it don't say that you have to collect on sales it says you have to collect at the time of the receipt of the sale consideration so is it necessary that the sale consideration should relate to that particular financial year or it can be related to earlier financial years also we need to see that this law is applicable from 1421 what rate at the rate of 0.1% or if no pen or aadhar is given at the rate of 1% we see in tds it is 5% here it is 1% then you need to file your tds tcs return you have to pay the tcs what you have done and you have to file your tcs return so when it become applicable for financial year 22 23 it will apply to you if your turnover in the previous year that is financial year 21 22 crosses 10 crore rupees first condition for tcs to become applicable second condition if sale consideration received from a particular buyer from one from 1422 onwards from the outstanding in the account of the buyer from the sales made at any time earlier or during the year has reached rupees 50 lakh start collecting the tax on receipt of sales thereafter as i said this is on the receipt not on the purchase or sales this is on the receipt which you receive against the sales you have made now it doesn't say whether when you have made the your sales whether you have made sales in the current year whether your sales you have made in the previous year or it is prior to the provision it could be a situation your outstanding balance may be belongs to financial year 1920 still you are receiving in the current year for the sale made by you the payment what are you receiving is against the sale made by you so we don't have to see whether sales has been made during the current year or it is in the last year or it may be a couple of years back as far as you are receiving the money on account of the sales the moment is crosses 50 lakh rupees you are liable to collect the tax at source clear Oh, sorry tcs should not be included as part of the invoice as it is to be collected only at the time of the receipt this is very important to note because if you see the initial portion of the section on every receipt once it crosses 50 lakh you are supposed to collect on the receipt basis not on sale basis so we are not supposed to put in the bill though in the practical scenario we see all the major big companies they say unless you put in the bill we will not be able to make you the payment because our erp solution doesn't allow us to have a debit note or the credit note at a later date but that is not the right practice because 
your sales might have made in the previous year before the introduction of the tcs provision itself then what you will do if you put into the bill you will put in the after the introduction of the provision what about the tcs related to the previous things when the payment is related in relation to the outstanding balance so as far as the section is concerned it has to be done at the time of the collection and not on the bill when it is not applicable again tcs is not applicable on the services rendered it is again on the sale of goods only sale and purchase of the goods not on the services tcs is not applicable if the customer or the buyer is liable to deduct tax at source on sales made to him under any provision of the income tax act that to say if that particular sales is liable for the tds under any other provision of the law maybe through the e-commerce portal or as we have seen the tds on the purchase of the goods there is no liability or there is no requirement to collect the tax so once as i taken in the issue when it says there is tds is applicable when tds is required to be deducted tcs doesn't become applicable this particular section will not apply to you even though you are seller who are liable to collect the tax because your buyer has already done on that tcs is not applicable on export of the goods so if you are exporting the goods you are a seller exporting goods to the overseas buyer and as the buyer doesn't need under that provisions you are also not required to deduct or collect the tax on the export of this goods now if you look both these sections together there could be a four situations we can foresee four situation situation number 1 where turnover of both seller and the buyer in the previous year doesn't cross 10 crore rupees no problem neither buyer nor seller has to apply the provision of the deduction or the collection because both are not qualify for the deduction purpose or collection purpose because their turnover are less than the 10 crore rupees situation number 2 turnover of the seller is above rupees turnover 10 crore and turnover of the buyer is rupee less than rupees 10 crore or less in the previous financial year then tcs will apply tds will not apply because buyer is not qualify his turnover is less than 10 crore therefore he is not liable to deduct the tds once he is not liable to deduct the tds you being a seller having your turnover above 10 crore you are liable to collect the tax clear situation number 3 turnover of buyer is above 10 crore and turnover of the seller is either rupees 10 crore or less than 10 crore in the previous year in that scenario only tds provision will be applicable and only buyer has to deduct the tds seller doesn't have to collect the tax so situation number 1 2 3 are quite fair only either no deduction or only one person has to apply the law but if the situation number 4 says the turnover of the both buyer and the seller in the previous year exceed the limit required 10 crore rupees and in that scenario both tds and tcs provision will become applicable so we have to see so we need to see which law we have to apply which whether tds has to be applied or whether tcs need to be applied because both has to deduct and if you go to the go back to the section not going back yes. so if you look at back the section it says when the tds provision is there you don't have to apply the tcs so depending on the situation when both has to do we have to decide whether we have to apply or not which is to be applied
now we will go back to our issues now we'll come back to our issue we have analyzed both the sections tds as well as tcs now based on the analysis of the sections do s has to collect the tax and do b has to deduct the tax both has to do in the same financial year whether the provision of both the sections will apply to both the persons together in the same financial year if yes why and in what circumstances if no why not yes sir so is s is liable to collect the tax in the same year when b the buyer is liable to deduct the tds tds so if we see the provisions of tcs provision we have seen it says if the tds law is applicable there is no requirement to collect the tax and if you see the tds provision it clearly says you need not deduct the tds if tcs provision are applicable but barring this particular tcs section so if you are liable to deduct collect the tcs under other provision other than the sale of goods provision that 2061h then there is no necessity to deduct the tds only he has to do the tcs otherwise tcs will prevail over tds sorry tds will prevail over tcs provision so when the buyer need to deduct the tds there was no necessity to deduct the uh, collect the tax now then why i want to take this particular issue then what is there in this issue as such when we have analyzed the law and we are clear about the law saying that tds law is clearly says tds will be applicable whenever there is a purchase of the goods unless you are liable to deduct under any other provision or liable to collect under any other provision except the tcs and the uh, sales provision so this will prevail over the collection of tax at on sales purpose but if you analyze the law little bit in deeper the deduction is on the purchase of the goods but the tcs is on the receipt of the consideration and not on the sales figure now let it, let's take a situation as on 31st march 2022 as a buyer you have a outstanding balance to pay to the seller 1 crore rupees on which let's say a tds has been already made in financial year 21 22 i'm clear there is outstanding balance in the book of the buyer to the tune of 1 crore rupees payable to the seller as on which buyer has already deducted tds now let's come to the current financial year so on 14 b has to pay to s 1 crore rupees during the current financial year 2022 b start purchasing goods from s and he purchase let's say goods worth rupees 50 lakhs 
in the month of april let's say he purchased goods worth rupees 50 lakhs in first situation 1 crore in the second situation so do b has to deduct the tax on first 50 lakh of the purchase as per the 194q as per the tds law do he need to deduct the tds so on first 50 lakh of the purchase b is not required to deduct the tds and accordingly he doesn't deduct the tds it's a it is a year to in every financial year you have to see the threshold limit of 50 lakhs it is year to year basis so in the financial year 2022 when b purchases goods from s till the his purchase reaches to the tune of 50 lakh rupees he doesn't let's say he doesn't deduct the tds beyond 50 lakhs he start deducting tds so as far as b is concerned he complied the provision in the financial year 2022 2223 up to 50 lakhs he has not deducted tds beyond 50 lakhs he started deducting tds and started making payment filing return etc 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 he comply with all the provisions now come to the s point of view this we have seen from the b point of view now let's analyze from the s point of view similarly as b has to pay to the s 1 crore rupees as on 1421 22 sorry s has to receive 1 crore from b as on 142022 20, plus b has s has sold 50 lakh worth of goods to a b on which b has not deducted the tds now let's see s received the money 1 crore opening balance plus 50 lakh rupees towards the sales made during the current financial year on which no tds has been deducted by the buyer or that purchase sales doesn't suffer the tds when you see from the s point of view during the current financial year he received 1.5 crore so first things he crosses a threshold of 50 lakh rupees of the collection during the financial year on first 1 crore rupees there was no necessity to collect because the first 1 crore rupees which was outstanding as on 142022 20, is already suffered tds in the previous financial year so as it has already suffered the tds in the previous financial year there was no necessity for him to collect the tax on that but the next 50 lakhs what he receives which doesn't so first the tds in the hand of the b because it is the initial purchase of 50 lakhs in the financial year 2022 because he doesn't deduct the tds but as far as s is concerned he has received 1 and 1/2 crore and that 50 lakhs has not suffered the tds therefore he is liable to collect tax on that 50 lakh rupees the moment he received next payment beyond 50 lakhs of the sales of the current year which has already suffered tds by in the hand of the buyer he don't have to collect the tax again but the intermediary that 50 lakhs sales of the current financial year which is coming al- receipt comes along with the previous year's payment he need to collect the tax on that 50 lakhs rupees now look at a scenario all we started raising tcs in the bill so when the tds provision has came almost everybody has stopped putting T- tcs in the bill because the sale has to suffer the tds in the hand of the buyer if i put tcs also as well he do the tds it become a double so law is very clear when tds is applicable tcs is not required so everybody has already stopped putting tcs in the bill now what will happen that intermediary 50 lakh rupees if it is not taken care there could be a consequences of interest penalty prosecution and all those things for not collecting tax on that 50 lakh rupees so in this scenario both will apply both tds as well as tcs both will applicable to the same set of buyer and sellers for the sales and purchase made between 
two of them in for the same financial year. Now, if there is no opening balance, then there is no issue because both the side 50 lakhs threshold is there. Then that problem doesn't arise. But if there is an opening balance, this problem will arise. Let's go to the next issue. Issue number three was a very small issue, but it is a very high relevance. Can every benefit or the purchase it qualifies for the deduction of tax under section 194R? This is a new section which is introduced by Finance Act 2022 applicable from 1st of July 2022. So down the line, two months down the line, there will be requirement to deduct the TDS on various benefit or the perquisite passed by an SSE in the course of business to his buyer, you need to deduct the tax. This is a new section, new provision introduced by law, which is applicable from 1-7-2022. Let's understand what the law says and what was the necessity. TDS on benefit of the perquisite, which is applicable from 1-7-2022. Any benefit of the perquisite received by a buyer from the seller is already taxable under law under the business income as it is under section 28 4 it was already taxable then what was the necessity to introduce this what was the necessity to have the tds when it is already taxable but we, if we look at the memorandum of the finance bill it says most of the benefits it says most of the benefits or the perquisite provided by the seller to the buyer goes tax free because if it is given in the kind it doesn't come under the net of the taxes where the seller claim it as an expenditure business expenditure for promoting his turnover he gives some gift he gives some freebies so as far as he is concerned it is incurred the expenses incurred in relation to promote his business to do his business therefore it is a business expenditure at the same time, when the buyer receives that in course of his business, it is his income. But the department say in most of the situation that goes caught free, that doesn't become taxable. To curb that, they said we'll introduce a law on which on every purchase you to provide or the every benefit you give, you have to deduct the tax. Let's see what the law says. Any person responsible for providing to a resident any benefit or purchase it with a convertible into money or not. So it covers kind also. With a convertible into money or not, arising from business or the exercise of a profession. So it covers both business and profession. By such residents shall before providing such benefit or purchase it as the case may be to such resident ensure the tax has been deducted in respect of such benefit of perquisite at the rate of 10% of the value or aggregate value of such benefit or the perquisite. To say that any person providing a benefit to a resident, a seller providing some sort of a benefit, some sort of a perquisite, to the buyer or to a professional 
in the course of his business or profession whether in form of cash or in kind because it's whether convertible into money or not so whether i give you a gift voucher which can be converted into money or given in form of a kind in form of a car or in form of a gold coin or a flight tickets anything of that sort so everything is covered here and the giver has to ensure that tax has been deducted and paid before he releases the perquisite or the benefit a duty has been cast to ensure that a tax has been paid or the deducted before release of the particular perquisite or benefit provided that in case where the benefit of perquisite as the case may be is wholly in kind or partly in kind and partly in kind sorry and partly in cash and partly in kind but such part of cash is not sufficient to meet the liability of deduction of tax in respect of whole of such benefit of perquisite the person responsible for providing such benefit of perquisite itself before releasing the benefit or perquisite ensure that required the tax required to be deducted has been paid in respect of such benefit or perquisite so if you providing the benefit in form of a cash no issue you deduct that much amount at the rate of the 10% or now you release only 90% but you give something in form of a kind wholly in kind the entire amount you given in form of a car or a gold coin has been given so there is no cash involvement then before you release that gold coin you need to see that the recipient pays the tax in respect the of that perquisite or where it is partly cash and partly kind and partly cash is not sufficient to cover the entire value of the cash and kind then also you ensure that the remaining part of the tax cash portion he can deduct remaining portion has been paid by the recipient before he releases that what is the exception there is a few exception to the general rule it says if the value of the benefit or the perquisite is less than or equal to 20000 rupees in a year so if you are giving the benefit or the perquisite to the customer or to the buyer which doesn't cross as 20000 rupees in a year then you don't need to deduct the tax so it says for the smaller value there is no necessity to have the compliance as part secondly it says we don't want to burden the small business houses whose turnover is less than 1 crore rupees in business or in profession is less than 50 lakhs they do not have to deduct or they can give benefits as it is without deduction of the tax without applicable of this provisions so moving forward this is going to be one of the major we see lot of schemes coming by various companies gives various schemes various freebies are given if you reach this turnover you will be given this additional item or you will give this additional discount so all those things will get covered here now we need to see go back to our question can every benefit will get covered every benefit every purchase it will get covered here let's say for example x company have a business meet and call its dealers distributors to attend that meet that business meet it showcase its products then they provide rooms for stay all lunch dinner all facilities will this amount to the perquisite in the hand of the buyer or in the hand of the giver and the receiver is it a perquisite or a benefit everything whatever you give it will be in form of a business promotion only but we have we need 
to distinguish various business promotions now let's add something more he do his business meet in dubai instead of mumbai he do it in dubai and he say comes you come along with your family will this amount to benefit at first stage let's say in mumbai or dubai it is purely for the purpose of showcasing its product he have a business meet dealer alone goes he invite only dealer or distributor to showcase his product to make them understand his product thereby they can distribute or they can sell his product will this amount to benefit given to the buyer is it a benefit as a second the second situation adding to that along with the dealer you invite the dealer along with his family will that amounts to the benefit so he says family is a benefit yes family is definitely a benefit no doubt about it because you are getting a benefit out of it why you are going is because he is showcasing his product he is going to explain you something but as far as your family is concerned they have nothing to do with it to keep you as a dealer intact i said you come with your family to make you to come otherwise you may also skip it okay when it comes to india we will see but when you say you come with your family family goes for the side scene for various things so all expenses is borne by the uh, dealer so as far as dealer is concerned this is a business meet he want to develop his business as far as he is concerned the expenses incurred is in the course of the development of the business in the course of doing business so as far as he is concerned it is a business expenditure but as far as the customer is concerned as far as the dealer is concerned the payment made in relation to family is definitely a benefit but as far as payment made or the trip expenses in related to the dealer for showcasing a product it is not a perquisite it is not a benefit is in my opinion there could be a different view because this is the new law we don't know what clarification department gives come out before it become applicable like we have circle number 13 and circle number 20 in related to tds and tcs we are we are given lot of questions has been given faq has been given clarifying various situations so we may get certain clarification in this also but as the law stand today we need to bifurcate <coughs> second situation can there be a situation where something is given in kind a car has been given it says if you reach a particular turnover after some time it says a particular turnover discount will be given some time it says it car will be given or a form of a gold coin it will be given is it a benefit so this is a additional things what you are receiving now the situation comes when you say it is given in form of a gold coin or a car it is a benefit is it the additional discount become benefit which liable to tds because once you give the additional discount definitely it comes under 284 it automatically it will come because you are going to pay to that extent less to the seller so it has to come in your books of account it has to come in the buyer's books of account but if the gold coin is given it can go directly go into the pocket it need not value need not get entered into the books of account to cover that they brought this so in my opinion more of the things which is given as an additional benefit or benefit in form of the kind in form of a items you sponsor a hotel trip i am as a dealer going for my family vacation and my supplier sponsors my trip including mine it sponsor my entire trip there is no business conclave there is no business meet it's a pure personal vacation but it is sponsored by the supplier 
Yes, it is a benefit. You need to deduct the TDS on that. And if it is in the kind you give in the form of a coupon, you have to ensure that before you release that, the other guy pays the tax on that. Yeah. Next issue. I'm going back to the TDS and TCS. I have taken this particular issue preempted because if there is a positive of time, at least we should be able to cover the new section. Issue number, if there is both purchase and sale of goods with the same party as we have seen in the point number two, then can TDS be made on the net payment to be made or can TCS be made on net consideration received? Let's say both buyer and seller are buying and selling goods to each other. I buy from you as well as I sell to you. And when it comes to the payment, we net off and we make only the balance payment. Either receive, I make payment or I receive the payment. If my sales is more, I'll receive from you. If my purchase is more, I pay to you. But we do a net off and only the difference is settled in cash. What will be the situation of the TDS and TCS? Can we do on the net off amount or do we have to need on the gross itself? He says net of business. Is any other view? Let's say we go with him. It's a net of. Then what happens? I buy goods worth of 10 crore from you and I sell goods worth 9.8 crores to you. So I have to receive only 20 lakh rupees. So as per you, as per if we say we have to do net off, then there is no TDS, no TCS is required. Is that is the purpose of the law. The whole purpose of the law will get defeated. So we have to see at a gross level, how much you need to pay to me, how much purchase I have made from you on that purchase, I'm liable for TDS. And you have to see how much you have supposed to receive. When we do net off, it is as good as received. I'm right. When we say these two has been net off, that means it is as good for one person, for the buyer, it is as good as paid. For seller, it is as good as received. Then only we say we are received in settling in the balance amount. So it is received, treated as as good as received. And as we see in our question number two, if required, TCS has to be applied. Otherwise, TDS will be there on the purchase of the goods. And if it's the intervening period is there, we may have to do the TCS also. So we can't do a net off. If we do not have the entire purpose of the law, we'll get defeated. And that may not be accepted by the department. Next. Can TCS be charged in the bill? As we already discussed, in my opinion, TCS cannot be charged in the bill because it is the collection. Only at the time of the collection, you are supposed to collect the tax. Otherwise, you may miss out somewhere. As I said, intervening period, you may miss out this. One. Two, if you have old outstanding balance, when the provision itself was not there, if you start charging in the bill, you may miss out that outstanding. We have suggested at that time that on 30th September 2022, uh, sorry, sub 2020, whatever outstanding balance is there, in the book of the buyer, 
receivable is there in the book you issue a debit note and say on this tcs has to be receivable old payment and as and when you receive you say you have received along with the tcs and pay that portion and balance you apportion towards the sale of goods but many business houses of the large company said no it is not possible everybody has to put into the bill only our erp system doesn't allow us to process the debit note unless it is in the bill we cannot make the payments so there are lot of practical problem was there and based on those practical problem many people have started putting into the bills still i'll say it is not the right way to look into it it is only at the time of the collection so what happens if no collection happens it become bad debt there could be a situation you doesn't receive the payment at all there is a sales return or the purchase return what happens if you already put into the bill so it is always advisable to have it at the time of the collection and not in the bill next if a person gives the declaration under section 194q that he will deduct tax at source on purchase of goods but fails to do so will tcs provision apply so we have seen in 194q it says if there is a tds provision if the person deduct the tds there is no requirement of the tcs okay now the person when i make a sales the person gives me a declaration saying that he will deduct tax so i am absolved from the collection of the tax but in the meantime due to any reason he doesn't deduct will tcs get triggered will tcs get triggered yes sir says yes you says no he has given declaration of doing it but he failed to do that can we go based on the declaration if you go back to the section 206c1 h tcs section it says no tcs is required to be done if there is a liability to the deduct the tds and the tds has been deducted tax has been deducted so exception you are not supposed to collect if there is a liability to deduct the tds and the person who is liable to deduct the tds has made the tds so if after giving certificate declaration he doesn't do it your tcs provision will start triggering and all those consequences will apply to you now in turn you can go to your buyer and saying that look here i have to pay this penalty please reimburse me that is between buyer and the seller whether he will reimburse not reimburse or whether later on he deduct not deduct that become the situation between buyer and seller but as far as law is concerned if he doesn't deduct tcs provision will trigger he has to make the tcs next if tax is collected by the seller on the sale value of the goods will the tds provision applies it's a reverse if tds is collected tcs doesn't apply if tcs is done whether tds will apply or not we will have couple of more meeting we have couple of more issues then i can leave it open so the tds law says 
TCS under section 206 C1 is not applicable. The moment TDS become applicable, we have seen if it doesn't deduct, TCS will trigger. But TCS law doesn't say if, uh, sorry, that is TCS law says if TDS is deducted, TCS will not apply. But TDS law doesn't say if TCS is done, TDS is not applicable. So in all the circumstances, TDS law is applicable. Irrespective of whether T TCS has been done in the done or not. Now look at the situation. TCS is already done in the bill. He has to do TDS also. It becomes double. On the same transaction, it becomes double. What issues we have seen earlier on the two different transactions, either there is a TDS or TCS. But it happens on the same transaction, it becomes twice. So we have a circular number 13, which give a clarification, which says. If TCS is already done, if tax is already collected on a particular transaction before buyer can deduct the tax, there is a rider on that. It says before buyer can deduct. So for example, as we were discussing, many people put into the bill. So before bill reaches to the buyer, seller has already applied TCS. He has already put into the bill. So that TCS is already applied. Therefore, buyer need not deduct the TDS because this is the clarification given in circular number 13 of 2021 of 30 years 6 that when seller is already done and it has been done before the buyer could have done the TDS. Then only in that situation, there is no requirement of the TDS. But if it is a vice versa, I have raised a sale bill without TCS and you are liable bill has already reached to you. You have not done the TDS. Therefore, I am doing the TCS as we seen in the last issues. In that scenario, you are not absolved from the TDS liability. Only in the scenario when the TCS is first done before the buyer could have deducted the TDS, then only you have an exception which is given through circular number 23. Next issues, where the tax is to be deducted on advance payment. As we have already discussed, yes, tax need to be deducted on the advance payment. Here the issue arises. We have seen through the circular that we don't have to include tax figure, GST figure while deducting the TDS. There is no, there is clarification which is you need to deduct tax only on the goods value, not on the TCS or sorry, GST. If it is mentioned separately in the bill, if bill is a consolidated bill, you need to deduct on the whole amount. But if you make an advance payment, you need to deduct on the whole amount. And payment will definitely go against both sales and TCS, both the goods value as well as the TC, uh, GST value, sorry, on the both value. So you need to deduct on the whole payment without bifurcating advance payment between the two. Okay. Now go back to the 194R, what we dis discussed the perquisite or the benefit where you need to deduct the TDS. How to determine the value of the benefit of the perquisites when same is in kind or in the absence of any valuation rules? Now, as regarding the valuation rules is concerned, it is too early to say anything. We don't know before they become applicable on 1st July 2022. There may some clarification, some circular may come, what we have seen in case of the other tedious provisions. So how the value, let's say there is no valuation rules, doesn't come, then how we have to value? Do we need to take the cost to the seller, to the giver, or do we have to take the market value? At what value we have to describe? If the person get at a discount, if the seller buys something in bulk, so he get at a discounted price. But if the dealer goes to buy the same item, he will not get at that price. He will get at higher price because he is getting in a smaller quantity as a single piece, whereas the dealer, uh, distributor takes at the very higher rate at a company level, 
they takes in bulk so they get at a lower price at a discounted price what will be the value so we have to look into we have to wait for the valuation rules if nothing comes then we have to see how we have to go or if there is no valuation can we say the provision doesn't apply at all we have an income tax if we cannot do the computation if computation fails there is no necessity to pay the tax we have very old case law which says if computation mechanism fail you don't have to pay the tax that income goes tax free can there be a similar situation here we have to wait and watch on very peculiar situation very interesting situation if we see the circular number 13 clarifies tds to be made on purchase amount excluding gst however it is also clarified in circular of the tcs circular number 21 of 2020 related to tcs where it says tax has to be collected on the whole amount or because it is on the receipt basis it is not on the sale basis purchase basis it is on the receipt basis so you need to collect on the whole amount including gst so can tomorrow department says as tds is deducted only on the portion of the purchase not on the portion of the gst therefore you collect tax on the gst portion so on the same transaction both tds and tcs earlier we have seen on the different transactions now we are seeing on the same transaction in the same bill value is also there gst is also there on value buyer deduct the tds on the gst portion seller collect the tcs is that is the position is that is the law is envisaged if you strictly interpret the law yes we need to do that but when a clarification says that you don't have to deduct on td uh, on gst portion we one has to assume that there is no requirement of tcs also on that because the exemption is given by the circular by the department itself not to deduct tds on gst portion then why there is a tcs the last one how to determine the turnover gross receipt of business for applicability of tds tcs provision in relation to the purchase or sales of the goods we have seen the tds and tcs provision where it says it will become applicable only when you crosses your turnover in the previous financial year rupees 10 crore turnover or the gross receipt from business Now, how to determine that? Because it says turnover, it says gross receipt. So, gross turnover we can understand it related to sales or purchase. But if you see the receipt, receipt could be other than the sales purchase also. You have a sale of a fixed asset. You might have received. income which is taxable and other heads of income maybe a rental income if you take a company point of view it maybe individual might take that other receipt not at a part of the profit and loss account can take in capital account or in his own account in the outside the business books but to look at the firm's point of view or the company point of view where entire receipt goes into the profit and loss account only it doesn't go outside the profit and loss account so if i look at the gross receipt will i have to include that rental income will i have to include the consideration received on the sale of the shares sale of the investment sale of capital assets to determine my 10 crore rupees turnover the answer is no and the they have also given the clarification saying that you have to look the receipt or the gross receipt or the turnover only in relation to the business which is taxable as a income from business or profession only in that scenario you have the law will trigger 
if you have receipt other than the business receipt though it crosses 10 crore if your business receipt doesn't crosses 10 crore rupees the provision of the tds and tcs in relation to purchase and sales of goods will not trigger thank you friends for giving me a very patient hearing i have tried my best to clarify whatever issues you have now it's open to all of you if you have any queries it's most welcome uh, i don't think anybody has any queries so thank you very much sir on behalf of fkcc and office bearers uh, for giving yeah. a wonderful presentation and uh, Madam, one small query is there. Yeah. Uh, this. Uh, oh, hello. Um, uh, yes, sir. Yeah, normally. Uh, hmm. Normally, we have to take declaration on a one eighty four Q. My good. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Please tell me. 184Q declaration we have to take from, hello? Yes, yes, sir, I'm hearing. See, 184Q declaration we have to take. Okay. If you take it every year, see, because uh, when the project started in 1st July last year, we have taken a declaration. Correct. That we have filed return for the previous two years. And, uh, and we have also given a judgment of the ITR return filed all those things. Correct. Okay. So, should we take that declaration every year or uh, how? See, as far as this is not applicable only to 194Q, as far as filing of the written declaration is concerned, this is applicable to the all the TDS and TCS provision. First. Second, yes, you need to see every year, year on year basis, whether the, the deductee or the person who is supposed to receive the payment has filed his or her written of income. Uh, I would rather say instead of taking the declaration, it is it will be available on the portal. It's better you verify on the portal that the person has filed his written because some people may give the declaration saying that this is the acknowledgement number and the date of filing. But how far that become correct, we have to see. So it will be the detail will be put on the portal by the department. You can cross verify that by putting logging into the department website and then put in the pan of the person. A window will pop up saying that yes, whether he is a specified person or not. Okay. In the beginning, it was not working properly. You mean to say now it is working properly and we can verify. Uh, as of now, also for the current financial year, still it is not working. So we have to <laughs> go with the declaration <laughs> time being, but as and when it become live. We have to cross verify with that. That will be my suggestion. Okay, another one question. Please. See, you were telling that uh, charging invoice on TCS uh, on uh, TCS on every invoice. Uh, I don't. Uh, is, it is not correct process. But actually, that is hello. Yeah, yeah, I am listening. So uh, that will be actually correct. No, actually, see, we are actually correcting on every invoice, and there is no missing at all. The law says, if you go through the section, it says on the receipt of sale consideration. I, I agree. I agree. Huh. But even if so I said law, no. I have also mentioned that uh, the most of the companies practically they are doing on the invoices. Yeah, correct. You said but that. if you go through the strict law interpretation, that is not the correct way of doing it. It is as on the collection only. It could sometime may missed out. As I said, if you have a receipt related to Financial year 1920 or 1819 outstanding balance. Mm. You may miss out because okay. once you say you already you are started putting into the bill, so you as presume say that's a today's one accountant. Tomorrow new accountant come and he sees that okay you are already charging in the bills. So whatever payment we are receiving we are already charged, but he might not see that if the payment is related to a financial year 1819, or there was no TCS provision at the time, so there could be a lapse. So that's why I say it is always as per the law is required to be collected on the receipt rather than putting in the bill. 
because practically we are seeing most of the companies are putting on the bills okay thank you any other questions even from the virtual who are there okay i don't think anyone can i close yeah. and uh, thank you very much sir on behalf of fkcc and office bearers for your valued time and excellent presentation uh, on tds and tcs and thank you everyone for uh, being here